Is AI a necessary response to a global workforce that is getting older? That's the topic of Inside AB. My name is Jeremy Lawrence, and I'm joined here in the studio by Shane Shaquille. Shay, a big announcement this week by Siemens. Tell us about it. Siemens have decided to invest $500 million in uh, you know, I IoT programs, Internet of Things programs, to train scientists, researchers, academics, technologists in uh, ways to develop their technicalities around AI and IoT uh, to power the software that they have that will run in the expo. It's called MindSphere. Okay, tell us about MindSphere. Well, MindSphere is basically an industry equivalent uh, uh, to Windows. Um, you'll have a lot of uh, capital intensive companies with pipes and you know tram doors and, and engines um, that you can't plug into a desktop computer and MindSphere is Siemens' answer uh, to get companies running on that kind of an operating system. Okay, okay. And you mentioned tram doors, we mentioned that in, in, uh, in the feature we did. Uh, they have some, some uses for that. that takes away manual labor, basically. Yeah, I mean, tram doors are, are an example. Siemens builds, uh, you know, light speed rails. Um, they used to require a lot of routine inspection because the doors are a really important part of trains because you can't go forward without one. Um, uh, now Siemens says that because of cameras, they can get, uh, pr they can run predictive diagnostics by just measuring the amount of time it takes for a door to open and close, and that won't need as much manual labor. Um, which is great for companies because anyone that's running a train can now have a lot more efficiency in their, you know, in, in their company. Okay, so that's just one example, of course, but if you saw that rolled out across multiple industries, that's a lot of jobs that are being lost to kind of like AI and IoT and brought together on these new platforms like MindSphere. So what happens to the workers? Well, that's the bad news. I mean, that means that, you know, well, the estimate is that with AI and IoT, you will have 66 million people out of jobs very soon uh, because of AI, especially in the developed world. I mean, America is supposed to lose about 50 million jobs all on its own. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, on the one hand, you'll have companies making a lot more money and a lot more profit, uh, but you'll have they'll have a lot of people standing outside the gates because there's, they lost all lost their jobs. Okay. So we mentioned in the magazine universal basic income and how that's gone from being just a theory into being actual trials now. Yeah, I mean, in some countries are trying it, like Finland, some places like Scotland and Ontario and Canada are working out a universal basic income scheme. Um, it's it's very early stages. It's one response to this kind of, you know, this this jobless revolution that's coming around in the next few years. Mm. But the Siemens boss mentions, um, for example, the Adidas factory in Germany as being an alternative way in which the economy could grow. Yeah, now Adidas did open a factory in Germany. Um, that factory usually would have gone to a low cost market like China, but it's employing really highly skilled labor that knows how to work with robotics and machines and AI and IoT. Um, and so, I mean, it won't be the same number of jobs in, in Germany that, that they would have had in China had the factory opened there. But it's a lot of high skilled labor. And that's, that's really the crux of the argument. In the coming revolution, you won't, companies won't need unskilled uh, labor that's prone and, uh, to working on manually intensive projects. The robots will be able to do that. What they need is really highly skilled, educated labor that can work with these machines. To get there, you will require a lot of training. Okay, okay. But it's not all bad news, is it, as we sort of explored in our feature? Yeah, I mean, you are expected to have about 85% of the jobs that this industrial revolution will require to be created by 2030. So you, we will have a lot more jobs. We will require a lot more training from companies as well as governments, like schools will need to be reformed. Uh, universities will uh, have to be you know, reformed as well. Dr. Roland Bush, who's the chief technology officer at Siemens says, we're all gonna have to get accustomed to the idea of lifelong learning, where everybody's just learning all the time. Mm -hmm. You can't just go to university and stop uh, your education. You're gonna have to learn all the time to be able to be employed basically. Okay, and to return to the subject um, that we posed at the start, how does this relate to the aging population? Well, that's, the, that's why AI is such a, an important part of the, of the industrial revolution that cannot be ignored. Uh, China's labor market has peaked um, it's they're all uh, over the next 50, uh, 25 years or 30 years China, the population of the working age population of China will grow by about 20 percent the the over 65 uh, year old population of China will grow by a hundred percent so the world will grow older in the 1980s the world was in their early 20s by the 19 by the 2050s the world will be in their uh, you know early 40s so we can't count on young people to keep uh, 
G- global GDP uh, at growing at the same momentum that it is right now. Okay, so AI is going to be the game changer that's going to power the next industrial revolution and global growth. Yeah, it has to come from somewhere and it looks like it's going to be the robots that do it. Okay, great, great. All right, well, you've been watching Inside AB. Thanks for joining us and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Join us every weekday at 10 a.m. We'll see you next time. Bye.